Okay, let's begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is World Humanitarian Day. Just a few moments ago, the Secretary General spoke at an event here at headquarters to mark the day, where he stressed that every civilian has a right to safety and protection, and we must do everything we can to deliver on this right. He added that we cannot fail the millions of people caught in conflict struggling to find food, water, and safe shelter, who have been driven from their homes with little hope of return, whose schools have been bombed, and who await life-saving medical care. These people are not a target, he said. He also recorded a video message for the day, which you can find online. The Security Council held an open meeting on Yemen this morning. Emergency Relief Coordinator Stephen O'Brien said he was grieved that in the past two years, despite his and his team's best efforts, he has been unable to report any significant improvement in the deplorable, avoidable, and completely man-made catastrophe that is ravaging Yemen. On the contrary, he said, the Yemeni people's suffering has relentlessly in intensified. Today, millions of people in Yemen are facing a triple tragedy. The specter of famine, the world's largest ever single-year cholera outbreak, and the daily deprivation and injustice of a brutal conflict that the world is allowing to drag on and on. Mr. O'Brien called for the opening of all ports, land, sea, and air, to civilian traffic to allow in aid, as well as for, all par as for, well as for parties to the conflict to respect international human and human rights law. He also stressed the need for civil servants to be paid to prevent the collapse of institutions and for accountability to be strengthened. For his part, the Secretary General Special Envoy, Ismail ur Sheikh Ahmed, Told the, sec told the Security Council by video link that Yemen today continues to traverse a critical and agonizing period as civilians pay a terrible price of an unending power struggle, adding that those who survive the fighting face death by famine or disease as the economic situation continues to deteriorate and the humanitarian conditions worsen. The envoy noted that military clashes continue and the reported attacks on ships imperiled the delivery of much-needed humanitarian and commercial supplies. In his recent meetings with senior Yemeni officials and regional leaders, he said that there is still consensus on the need to reach a political solution and to support the UN-sponsored peace process under the Secretary General's auspices. The UN mission in the Central African Republic, MINUSCA, reports clashes between anti-Balaka and Front Populaire pour la Renaissance de Centrafrique Arab faction on Wednesday in Bria. Peacekeepers provided protection to over 2,000 civilians who had congregated at Manuska premises and to the nearby camp for internally displaced people. Manuska continues its patrols in the town, which remains tense today. Peacekeepers also intervened and deterred further fighting yesterday in Zemio between Fulani and alleged anti Balaka affiliated groups. Manuska continues its robust patrolling throughout the town. We issued a statement yesterday condemning the terrorist attacks in Spain and extending the Secretary General's heartfelt condolences to the families and friends of those killed and to the government and people of Spain. The United Nations stands in solidarity with the government of Spain in its fight against terrorism and violent extremism. Stefan de Mistura, the Special Envoy for Syria, spoke to reporters in Geneva yesterday and said that his office is planning for the next round of official talks to take place in Geneva just before the General Assembly session in September. That period, he added, should be considered as preparations for what he believes will be a very significant October and November. Mr. De Mistura said that we have already seen a reduction of violence in Syria, even with agreements still to be concluded regarding de-escalation of fighting there. He noted progress this week on humanitarian access, with a convoy of 50 trucks led by the UN humanitarian coordinator Ali al-Zatari reaching Duma and providing aid to some 35,000 people. Regarding Sierra Leone, the UN Disaster and Assessment Coordination Mission following the deadly mudslides last week has started to deploy in support of the response efforts carried out under the leadership of the government. For its part, UNICEF is providing emergency sanitation and safe drinking water, distributing infection prevention materials such as face masks, gloves, and body bags, as well as medicines and tents. It is also working with the Ministry of Education and Science to ensure that the schools, particularly those currently used to accommodate the affected people, will be ready for the beginning of the school year. And the World Health Organization is working with health workers on basic infe infection prevention control measures, supporting decontamination of the mortuary at the local hospitals, and ensuring the safe disposal of any personal protection equipment.
the World Food Program in partnership with the Director of Health Services in the federally administered tribal areas of Pakistan, has formally launched a program to prevent stunting in the Kuram agency of those areas. Stunting occurs when a child's growth and development is impaired from poor nutrition. In the Kuram agency, stunting rates stand at 57.6%, which is alarmingly high and well above the global average. WFP will work with the Office of Research, Innovation, and Commercialization in uh, Kuram to dis deliver locally produced specialized nutritious food for children aged between 6 and 24 months, along with pregnant women and nursing mothers, through an extensive network of community-based female health workers and health facilities. In addition, children aged 24 to, 40 to 59 months will receive micronutrition, micronutrient supplements. More than 75,000 children and women will benefit from the program. WFP has more details online. That's it for me. Uh, do we have any questions? No questions? There you go. Sure. I wanted to ask you now, uh, again, about the, the, the elections in Yemen. Uh, excuse me, in Kenya. I'm, I'm going to ask about Yemen as well. In Kenya, the, the, now the EU has called for the, the making public of the local results. There seems to be more and more questions about the way that they were conveyed. Uh, and a lot of international actors uh, that don't have as big a presence in Nairobi as the UN does have called for this type of data to be produced. I wanted to know what is the UN's, he's already, the Secretary General's already, you know, congratulated and, and apparently called the results final, uh, President Kenyatta. But what is the UN's, does the UN join these calls for the release of those data or what's their position? Well, uh, our position has been that any complaints need to be worked out through the established system. Uh, apparently, there are signs from the various parties that that is what's going on, and we will monitor that process as it continues. And I wanted to ask, I became aware yesterday that, that and I'd like you to confirm that the, the, the DPA position currently held by uh, Ty Brooks Verihun has been offered to a Monica Juma, who is a G Kenyan government official in the foreign ministry. And I'd like to know, apparently this, the position was given to her and she was given six months to take it or not so that this process would take place. What is the, what is the status of that second highest position in DPA currently? And well, why wasn't it advertised? Uh, well, at this, at this point, as you know, Mr. Zerahun has, has the post. When, when there's another appointment to be made, we'll announce that, but we have not made another announcement. But why wouldn't a position of that height be, be advertised for people to apply? We have processes that, uh, that apply to all of the various uh, high positions. I believe we have competitive processes, including interview processes for, for all of the senior positions, and, and we'll make the announcement when it happens. I wouldn't have any confirmation of how this process is carried about, uh, but, uh, and at this stage, like I said, I don't have an announcement for Mr. Zerahun, uh, even uh, for any departure. Once we have um, that announcement, we'll, we'll make that. Uh, yes, uh, Ben and then Oleg. Okay, thank you. Um, a group of uh, three uh, UN experts have uh, said that racism and xenophobia is growing in the US. Um, I've put questions to the experts, not yet heard back, so I'm wondering, do we know what are they basing their evidence just on Charlottesville? Um, what, where are they getting their evidence of this growth? Hold on, I'll wait for the noise to subside. Thank you. Um, I don't speak for the experts, but they base uh, the rapporteurs and independent uh, human rights experts who report to the Human Rights Council base their work on a variety of uh, uh, information sources, uh, whether that includes interviews with various people, uh, field research, or working with different NGOs. So, but for the specifics of, of these particular experts, you need to get in touch with them or, or with our colleagues in Geneva who might be able to help you out. Yes, Oleg. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, what is the status of the SPLA in opposition members that are currently hiding in Eastern DRC? Uh, I'm sure you heard yesterday the Deputy Prime Minister of DRC who called for the UN either to repatriate them or find uh, a third country for them to stay. How is this issue being solved? Well, uh, the UN, uh, through the mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, MONUSCO, uh, is working to see what uh, solution, what long-term solution can be made uh, for the uh, people who fled across the border from South Sudan into the DRC. Uh, at this stage, uh, what we're trying to do is ensure that there is an outcome 
where their their basic rights will also be be respected, but also that uh, the population of the area will not uh, f uh, feel particularly burdened by uh, by any uh, activities of of armed people. Um, yes, is uh, repatriation one of the options being considered? Well, I, I believe uh, in, in the regular reports uh, to, uh, that MONUSCO provides to the Security Council, they'll have updates on what's being done to handle this. Right now, this is still something that's just under discussion. Yes. I to ask you again about the, the, the uh, Rif region of, uh, in Morocco. There's a controversy now between Reporters Without Borders and the, the government's uh, uh, Ministry of Culture where Reporters Without Borders has reported on a number of cases of reporters that were locked up and sentenced for covering the unrest in al Husayma and elsewhere in the Rif, and the government says bloggers aren't journalists, and, and they, they were totally reject it. So I'm wondering, given the statements by the UN in favor of freedom of the press, do you have a view, number one, on whether reporters have been restricted in their ability to cover this unrest in, in the Rif region? Number two, whether uh, online citizen journalists are journalists subject to the protections of Article 19 and otherwise. And just what's your view? There's also apparently a, a, another protester has been killed, Mr. Al-Haddad, died from his injuries of the tear gas uh, um, crackdown by the government. So those are my questions. Well, we would be concerned about any uh, uh, restrictions that would impede the freedom of the press and also uh, regarding what you just said, the freedom of uh, uh, people to enjoy their right to peaceful assembly. So we'd have concerns about that, uh, but I'll, uh, we'll also have to see uh, what our human rights colleagues have to say about the situation for, for journalists uh, more generally there. But there's still no, co no, no, no comment uh, from, from DPA about the, the ongoing situation there and, and including the press freedom situation? Well, if there were, we would share it with you. I guess there isn't. One more? Sure. sure, I have one more. And again, I'm sorry, uh, the, the, as these exhibits from the Ang Lapsang trial uh, continue to come in, I wanted to ask you this, it's kind of, uh, I was surprised to see it because it wasn't, at least the days that I went, presented in the trial. There are documents that show that uh, the office, UN Office of South-South Cooperation wrote a letter supporting the conference center in Macau, specifically after South-South News covered a Ban Ki-moon trip. Uh, uh, I think they were the only media to cover it. And afterwards, they were congratulated by the Office of South-South Cooperation, and a letter was produced by Mr. Yiping Zhu um, supporting the conference center. So I went in, from the document, it appears that the UN system as a whole, whether the Secretary General knew or not, essentially rewarded positive coverage of this Ban Ki-moon trip with a letter for a, a conference center that's now been totally discredited and was, was not built because it was based on bribery. And I wanted to know, what is the UN's position on this? What is, I know Mr. Yiping Zhu has left, but what was the connection between the South-South News traveling with and covering Ban Ki-moon's trip and this letter that was given to the, the Sun Kyan Ip Foundation to build a conference center in Macau? Well, I'm not aware of any uh, connection uh, regarding concerns about South-South News, we've explained to you at the time what our concerns had been about South-South uh, News and its activities. Uh, they are no longer accredited, and the Office of South-South Cooperation, as you know, has had undergone uh, different uh, reforms under its new leadership, and, and I believe they've been in touch my, with you about that. Sure. Well, they really, my question really at this point goes to the Secretariat, if you see what I'm saying, because the, 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 the activity of South-South News that UNDP's Office of South-South Cooperation was rewarding with this letter was coverage of the Secretary General's trip. So was this done with no knowledge no, no, by, no, the Secretary, we, by the Secretary? We, we, don't, we don't reward coverage of trips by Secretary General. I mean, there are many trips, many, many outlets cover them. If, this was if a you were all getting Honduras, rewarded for them, that, that would be lots and lots of rewards to hand out. Have a good weekend, everyone. Okay.